So according to Metacritic, 2013 saw the least number of games rated over 90 or higher. Oh, man. But before we get to this video, here's the question of the day. Alright, so was 2013 the worst year in terms of gaming? Well, at the very least, perhaps the worst in the 7th generation. <sighs> so basically, 2013, which is obviously now over, saw the least amount of games that are rated over 90, or at least 90 or higher, on the Metacritic scores for the 360 and the PlayStation 3's life cycle. That's right. Ever since the PS3, the Wii, the original Wii I should say, and the Xbox 360 were released from the range of span, uh, from the span of 2005 all the way to the end of 2013, it had the least amount of 90 plus games on it. So, I mean usually when a game gets a 90 or higher, it's usually indicative of a really worthy game, a well received game critically acclaimed game from the official reviewers. Not so much the user scores, the fans, but rather the people that are paid to do reviews, people that are working for the IGNs and the game spots and so on and so forth. Uh, 2013 actually had the weakest showing. There was only a few titles. Uh, very, very few actually. Oh boy. It's actually kind of sad. Now, this is all because of a very simple reason. The 7th gen is finished. It was the final year, it was the last legs of the PS3, the 360. Yeah, the Wii, you could say, was pretty much dead since 2012, ever since they introduced the Wii U. Now, GTA 5 was, of course, the highest ranked on Metascore, Metacritic. And there's a bunch of other games that were included as well, uh, games like Last of Us and Bioshock Infinite and Mario 3D World, Fire Emblem Awakening. There's several titles on there, but not an impressive amount, even including the handhelds. Bringing in the PC, mobile, and handheld titles boosted lists of 90 plus games to 12. So just 12, really. And that's including everything. All of it. The, the PC, all the other, other platforms. The casual market. And the handheld systems. <laughs> it's not a big surprise. I mean, that's all there is to it. PS3, PS3 was done, finished, and then the PS4 came in. Same with the Xbox 360, because the Xbox One was coming out. So, of course, they had the least amount of games coming out, and the, the companies were just not focusing as much on those systems anymore. Again, the final year where those systems got a chance to shine. And, of course, they would have the least amount of 90-plus rated games. It makes perfect sense. It's just a matter of being phased out. It's just the natural cycle of a gaming generation. Because guess what, seven, eight, ten years from now, if the PS4 and Xbox One, de depending on how much the eighth generation lasts, its final year, you know, until the next generation or whatever, whatever happens, it's going to be on its last legs too. It's going to have the least amount of 90 plus games. It always seems to be the case. If you take a look at past generations, uh, the N64 in its final year, the PS1, the PS2, original Xbox, the GameCube, you know, in their final year, they didn't have any or very few games that were above 90. Very few titles that were worth mentioning or worth checking out. The Wii U did pretty well this year. They actually, uh, Metacritic tracked 53 games released for the Wii U in 2013. Receiving an average meta score of 70, 72.6. That's not too shabby. Uh, it looks like PS3 and PS4, uh, for that uh, matter, 
had relatively higher than the Microsoft systems. 70.1 for the PS3, an average on Metacritic, and 73.4 for the PlayStation 4. The 360 and the Xbox One, though, on the other hand, had around 67.7 and 66.9, so somewhere in the late 60s. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and the least amount of exclusives, you know, you don't see as many exclusives these days. Uh, did the Xbox 360 even have any exclusives that came out this year? I can't think of one. I can't even think of a single one. There isn't a single title for the 360 that was an actual 360 exclusive. Maybe there might have been like one that sneaked back by that I'm forgetting. Maybe some game. Maybe there's got to be one, but I just I can't think of one. A single 360 game that came out in 2013 that was an exclusive. At least a PS3, you know, had a few titles. There was it still had a bit of that attention, you know, Gran Turismo. Uh, the Last of Us and uh, Beyond Two Souls. I mean, that that's all there is to it. It's really not a big deal. As far as being the worst year, certainly of the 7th generation, perhaps. I mean, if that's the case, you know, it has the lowest score since they came out, then that, that, that would make sense. You know, that probably was the, the worst year as far as quality titles, originality, and reflecting back on that generation, you know, you take a look at the, the games that came out, the Metal Gear Solid 4s, um, the God of War 3s, the Gears of Wars, uh, the Dead Risings, you know, the, the Dead Space, you know, all these titles that were considered really good and really amazing and it's like you gotta check out the systems this was I, I, you know 2013 was a a dying year 2013 was like okay we've seen what these systems had to offer it's like we've seen the best in the previous years 2013 was not a banner year it wasn't a a year where every amazing experience was going to be released that year like Bioshock Infinite as high as the reviews were, was not some sort of revolutionary groundbreaking game. If you want a good Bioshock experience, just play the first one that came out way back for the 360, like six or seven years ago. That was incredible, if not just for the uh, amazing atmosphere and all of that. You know, you have other titles, like, you know, Last of Us was probably one of the more eye-catching titles but at the same time you know was the last of us a killer app was it so innovative and groundbreaking that it made a ps3 even more like it like a top metal gear solid 4 or the uncharted series or the kill zone sequels or even you know mod nation racers and little big planet and all the other you know demon souls I don't think it did. I don't. I don't think it topped those games. It didn't top the Dead Rising 2s or, you know, the Dead Space. I don't think it topped those. So 2013, yeah, I would say it's the worst seventh generation year. Aside from maybe, oh uh, five and 06 was pretty bad. For each uh, launch game, uh, I should say launch uh, system, because uh, of course it was pretty bad for the PS4 and the Xbox One because it was a launch period with only a couple of months in there, uh, not even a couple of months, you know, less than two months. And the same could be said for the 360 when it came out in 05. It didn't have that many games because it, w it just came out in late 05. Same with the PS3 and the Wii. Um, they came out in late 06. And here's the answer to the question of the day. 